Hi, it's Bumbleberry, and we're back playing Who's the Worst Person in the World? <laughs> um, we've got our sexy pants Raul face over here. Um, I think this is us, the damaged goods, quote unquote, of the novel, and uh, we get to continue being her mamala. So, where am I? Here? Chapter 2. It's funny, is it not? What's funny? They always leave you. Such is the way of the world. The more you love, the more you lose. Oh, it seems like they'll stay forever, but they never do. I'm the only one who stays, my lovely Rose. Dude, you're haunting your daughter. I don't think that's something to brag about. My love is the only love you need. You were always so weak. Always so loving to people who did not deserve it. I told you to get rid of her, didn't I? I told you to be wary. I knew it from the start, my Rose. Um, she led you astray or she was nothing but selfish? She was nice. I liked her. I don't even know who we're talking about. Um, I mean, I'm selfish as evil mom. I guess she was nothing but selfish. You fought so hard. You never used to fight with me. But now she killed herself. Your sacrifice lost in her selfish ways. I knew she would just cause you pain. Ew, I don't like either of these options. I'm not glad she's dead, and I'm also not glad that you're back to me. You need to get out of my control, Rosa. Be free, be free. Maybe if I'm the worst, she'll run away. I'll just say I'm glad you're back to me. I was so worried about you, darling. She almost led you astray. Away from me. Trust in mother, darling. <laughs> like Mother Gothel. I am just glad to have you back to myself. Your silence bothers me, child. She was important to me, mother. I... I loved her. Mother only laughed as Rosa screamed out her pain. <gasps> oh no! Rosa felt strong arms shake her awake. Rosa? She opened her eyes and was hit by a strange sadness that crushed her. I hope it's not the little girl. She was dazed for a moment. Why was she so sad? And then she remembered. Her best friend was gone. She was gone. Rosa, how are you feeling? Guillaume sat by her bed, a hand in hers. Rosa didn't realize she had been holding on to it tightly in her fitful sleep. She had broke from his grasp and clutched her knees. Rosa. She remained silent. I came to check on you. You went into shock and lost consciousness. I can only imagine how hard it must have been for you to see her like that. My French or Spanish? I can't remember, but hopefully it's okay. His words echoed in her brain, yet she did not register much of their meaning. He looked so fierce, clenched fist. Rosa still refused to speak, and Guillaume fidgeted with his glove. The wake will take place as soon as possible, Rosa. I just wanted to let you know that she is being taken care of. He's hiding something. There was slight- oh, that's me. He's hiding something. There was slight triumph in Mother's voice. He wants to get rid of her body as soon as possible. Don't you see it, child? Tell me you're not falling for this. Rosa was tired. It was unsurprising to hear Mother say such things. She hated anyone who came close to Rosa's heart. Rosa didn't want to hear it. She didn't want to deal with anything right now. I mean, she just lost her best friend. All she wanted to do was wallow in her loneliness. To curl up inside the hole Catherine had left behind and sleep. My child, tell me you see it. I shouldn't say look how unperturbed he is. Just say remember the fear in Catherine's eyes. You have seen it, haven't you? She was mostly hostile. But sometimes, when her sanity returned, she was afraid. Afraid of this man. How well do you even know him, child? I've known him for as long as I knew Catherine, mother. He's a close friend. And she has the hots for him, like, lay off, mom. 
I didn't ask you how long you've known him, but how well. Beyond that mask he displays in public view, do you even know his past? Do you even know any of his ambitions or secrets? He's always a private man, mother. Think back, child. Isn't it curious how all his past experiences hit... Oh, relationships, <laughs> not all experiences, <laughs> have ended in disaster. Everything he touches crumbles. That is not enough to accuse him of anything. You idiot! He is different. He does not belong. I told you he's a vampire or something. You felt it too, haven't you? Rosa looked at Guillermo with new eyes now. A hint of doubt slithered out from beneath her sadness. Rosa wanted something to blame, a cask for all her regrets. Guillermo seemed like the perfect candidate, didn't he? He's like looking at you like, what? What do you think of me? Yes, you're finally seeing it. Open your eyes, child. It made sense. Guillermo and Catherine's relationship began to peter off in the coldness right before she died. Her mental, her mental instability only served to compound the fracture in their relationship. Perhaps, I can't believe he married this little girl. Perhaps Guillermo was tired of her, and had her killed off for convenience? Or perhaps Catherine, in her psychotic state, killed herself to spite him? Rosa stared at the man beside him. Er, but her. He is not to be trusted, child. He's a demon. Nah, I wouldn't doubt it. But he seems like a fairly nice demon. You know, he gave me snacks. I don't ask for much. Guillaume returned Rosa's angry stare with a resolute look. I know you must hate me, Rosa. I am aware that I only aggravated Catherine's condition with my presence. I know the feeling when I'm not wanted. He stood up a hard yet kind look on his face. Everyone that looks so sad, like we're about to go off into the universe or something. Anyway, <clears throat> just remember that I will always be here for you, as much as I was there for Catherine, even though she spat me out. Rosa bit her lip. When Catherine had refused to eat, it had been Guillermo who fed her and attended to her. That must have been super hard. Caring for people who, like, either have no idea what they're doing or who are, like, belligerent is tough. Despite Catherine hurling abuse at him, he had tried to care for the sick woman himself. Lies, all lies. Keeping up appearances. Then what is it that he has done, mother? Catherine committed suicide. It was not by his hand that she died. Are you just going to leave it at that? Look at his faith. His faith. <laughs> Look at his face and tell me you trust him wholeheartedly. Rosa tried to search for the answer in Guillermo's eyes. He's guarded, but as always his face betrayed only a few emotions. I don't know. Mother was screaming now. He killed her. I'm sure he did. And you're letting him get away with it. Please, my head hurts. And you say you loved her. You never loved her, you selfish child. Worst mom... Worst mom. Worst mom. This is terrible. She's saying she's selfish. Just like your father. Stop. You throw people away. Didn't you throw me away when I inconvenienced you? Admit it. You were secretly relieved I died. What? Of course she would be. You're a psychopath. I would be relieved. I want her to be safe and happy. I want to be a nice mommy guardian angel. Turns out I need to be the meanest person in the world. She screamed back at that last voice. Her mouth quivered. Guillermo stared at Rosa in shock. The outburst had accidentally come out aloud. It was the plug that kept the tears from... Oh, it pulled the plug that kept the tears from pouring out. Now her vision clouded, and she blinked them away again and again. Great. Now she's sobbing in front of this guy and having total mental issues, and he's probably just used to it by now. I love the, like, minor facial changes. Like, look at his face. It goes from looking down, looking down, looking down, and um, looking up. So he's wiping my tears. Or her tears, sorry. I can't believe I'm not playing this poor little innocent Rosa. Instead, I have to be the meanest person. I'm the mean ghost. Spooky ghost. He did not say anything while doing this, and Rosa stared blankly ahead. It almost stunned her how many tears a person's eyes could carry. I loved her too, Rosa. He said it after a while. I know what you're feeling. 
She didn't know if it was her own or mother's anger somehow influencing her, but her chest heaved. She balled her fist up so tightly that her fingernails hurt. Shut up. She spat, and the man recoiled at the uncharacteristic bitterness of her words. Catherine was afraid of you in her last days. You did something to her. I know it. She could feel Mother inside her head, building up her anger. He has to be punished. You are to blame. He has to atone. I know you're guilty. Oh, he looks mad. He must be punished. Guillaume stared at her, dumbfounded for a few seconds. But the man didn't try to appease her. Good for you. He only stepped closer to Rosa and wrapped his arms around the hysterical girl. Oh, let go of me. She's so sad. Well, at least we still have a demon friend of some kind. I hate you. Let me go. But Kierm didn't. If you need something to hate, then I'll accept your hate. But you must accept my comfort, too. I need you, too, right now, Rosa. You're the only one who loved her as much as I did. Guillermo's words brought back Catherine and Rosa's mind. Almost at once, the anger was replaced with a sadness so heavy she couldn't breathe. Why was she so angry? She was focusing on anger instead of pain. It was easier. The real tears came, all for the loss of the girl they both loved. Tomorrow was not going to come. There was only right now, the loss, and two friends mourning a loved one. But Rosa kind of loves him, too. Rosa cried until she thought she wouldn't be able to stop, and Guillermo quietly held her. Slowly, her weeping began to subside into sobs, and only then did he speak again. Stay in the chateau, Rosa. I know you are thinking of leaving now that Catherine is gone, but I can't let you wander the streets again. I will take care of you. It's what Catherine would have wanted. Like a spell being broken, these words brought back her anger. How could you possibly know what Catherine wants? She pushed his arms away from her. She's dead. Duh? <laughs> like, of course she is. He's trying to be nice. I think he's a nice guy. I don't know. I think he's supernatural and probably eats people. But, you know, there might be mean people. Guillermo's mouth pursed and he stepped away. I want you to go. Please leave me. No. Guillermo sighed and closed his eyes. I understand. He turned on his heels and left without another word. This guy is patient as all heck. Hours seemed like minutes. She would fall asleep and awaken in unfit intervals so often she had lost the exact time. She would stare at part of the wall. One would think that mourning should be spent in a depressive frenzy. All the reasons to grieve are yours. She could wail, she could pull her hair, curse the skies, she could eat chocolate! She could reminisce of the past, admire the frailty of human lives. Unfortunately, it was something less poetic. Pain was simple. It was clean. It was a well-sharpened knife that sliced through the heart in one stroke. No blood. No mess. Except for when she's not pregnant. Empty. When tears were spent, there was just a hole where your heart has been. The hurt called out to you. It lingered. But since there was nothing there anymore, you couldn't find where the pain ended, and you began. Rosa slept all day. The sun had gone down twice before she shifted from her bed. She slid up slowly. She stood with purpose. I'm surprised her mom has been kind of quiet. My child, you know I hurt when you're hurt. Already a surge of power flowed within her, fueled by her grief. The power filled her up, and there was so much emptiness inside that the energy seemed to saturate her whole body. Purpose was always a balm for grief. Mother, tell me what to do. Mmm. I don't know, justice or retribution, what do you guys think? I'm going to say... Retribution. Oh, that's terrible stuff. <laughs> I was going to say justice for Rosalind since we just finished Okage Shadow King, but she, I don't know. Start with his guilt, child. Uncover his lies. Crush his mask. He must pay for everything that he's done. Oh, hello. I got an achievement called The Grudge. Rosa didn't, I mean, what am I doing? 
and glowing. Rosa didn't speak, but she started to form the words in her mind, feeling them in her bones, giving life to every thought. She took a small knife and carved a symbol on her floor. It didn't mean much, a guilt spell. It didn't aim to punish, it only aimed to inform. She needed to know how much guilt the man carried, and the source of such guilt. If the guilt was concrete and came from a direct action, she would know Guillermo did something to Catherine. It had been a while since she had used magic. It used to be the only way she could protect herself from the world. Yes! Mother had taught her, and now Mother guided her as she cast her spell. She needed a possession of the man. Rosa opted for his voice. Really? You can do that? Still fresh from memory, she focused on the last conversation they shared. If you need something to hate, I will take care of you. I need you. His words made Rosa feel distress and confusion. Always it was this way with him. The feeling wasn't foreign. It had been there for years. I will always be here for you. <gasps> what was that? Rosa felt a violent force upturn her stomach. It was that horrid lunch just before vom- Oh, lurch just before vomiting. You failed! The spell collapsed in her brain. Focus, idiot child, or you'll lose your chance. Rosa tried again. This time she focused on Guillermo's eyes. Cold, like flints of steel. Dark and fathomless. No grief except, perhaps, for the situation. No Catherine. No pain of loss. This didn't matter to her. Their relationship was dying anyway. Where was his guilt? Rosa dug deeper. She increased the chanting on her lips. No torment. No uncertainty. No guilt. Did the spell fail again? Maybe he has nothing. He has no guilt. He didn't do anything. Or he just doesn't care. There was no guilt in Guillermo's eyes. She could stop the spell now, knowing that he was innocent. If the spell had worked, then Guillermo was blameless. But... This absence was most distressing. Rosa desperately pushed her mind further, almost wishing there were traces hiding beyond her reach. Guilt should be present in any loss, no matter how little. Don't we blame ourselves for our own loss? Don't we hate ourselves and punish ourselves, even if it wasn't our fault? It didn't have to be real, but we need guilt to feel pain. But Guillermo doesn't have a sliver of guilt. <gasps> what is that? Ouch. The pain is squeezing her tummy. Oh no. Something is wrong. Before Rosa could agree with Mother, she felt a sharp pain in her throat. <gasps> no! She clutched her neck, scraping, scratching. A sharp, jagged lump was blocking her breathing. Ah! Gross! She could feel its edges crawl up her windpipe, tearing the soft walls as it moved about. This is nasty. The pain did not stop. Rosa fell to her knees and gagged. Oh jeez. I'm sorry, girl. I didn't mean to. I thought I was doing something nice. Maybe he has a protection spell on him. She thrashed about like a woman being strangled. Mother remained calm, unaffected by Rosa's distress. She's like, I'm dead. Deal with it. Rosa was about to expel whatever it was. Tears ran down her face. The horrible, acidic taste coated her tongue. Finally, she opened her mouth and forced the vile thing out. She kept her eyes shut, afraid to look at whatever had come out of her. But the choking feeling gripped her and she puked again. She spat after she vomited. Her spit felt heavy and thick in her mouth. It gathered around her and, ew, in a growing pool. Every breath was laced with pain, but the gruesome effect had finally stopped. She wiped the sweat on her forehead. Something on the floor reflected light. She struggled to comprehend what was in front of her. She reached out with the hand, and the prick of something sharp made her recoil. She tried again, this time seeing more clearly. This poor girl, she's like being beaten, potentially raped, vomiting, like my goodness. Rosa picked them up with shaking hands. Needles? Needles were crawling up her throat? In her palms were a handful of long metal needles. Rosa examined them with a horrified kind of curiosity. She stuck one in her thumb and it drew blood. They were real. They had materialized in her throat while casting the spell on Guillermo. Rosa wiped her throat. There was something wrong with him. <gasps> Maybe he's a voodoo doll that came to life. <laughs> Maybe he has a voodoo doll. I don't know. I don't know. Something potent and dark was in him. Or could it be that she merely botched the spell horribly? I doubt it. 
she had pushed her limits too far. But still, a tugging concern was forming. It was as real as the metal needles in her hand. Rosa tried to stand on her feet, but she was exhausted. Her knees failed her, and she crumpled to the floor like a rag. I knew it. What would you possibly know? We must get to the bottom of this. Are you quite all right, my darling? Now you see it, too. There is a sinister force at work. Get up. We have a lot of work to do. We must find out what he is and stop him. Rosa stared at the needles in her hand. Who are you really, Kier? I don't know. And that was chapter two. Short and sweet. I'm loving it. Um, oh, well, this looks a lot brighter. Well, so thank you for uh, hanging out with me for chapter two. I'll see you guys next time for chapter three shortly. See you then and stay sweet. Also, what the heck is going on with the needles? What do you think? Is he a voodoo baby? Does he like sewing? Did he remove her heart and stitch it back up? Or is his heart in a chest like Davy Jones? I don't know. I don't know. Also, how am I supposed to cope with being such a mean mom? Ah, anyway, <laughs> let me know your thoughts and please do like or comment. Have a great day. Bye.